Today, I'm going to show you how to get AI into Blue Iris using Code Project. It is ridiculously simple and it'll make your Blue Iris and VR even so, so much better. The best thing about this is that it doesn't cost that much. Well, relatively not that much. Apparently, you don't need a fancy GPU car like $200 and video car. You can just use the Coral chip from Google and that's it. Plug it, that chip into the USB port and now you get local AI detections. It is so nice. So to begin, you need to install Code Project. Go to this website, download the Windows X64 installer, download the exe file. It actually comes in a zip file and then extract the zip file to get that exe file. Now just execute that file to install. Click on next, click on I accept, click on next, click on next again, click on next all the way just to finish the installation. By the way, if you have DeepStack already installed, most likely you have it already because that's the default AI that came with Blue Iris. Don't forget to uninstall that before you install this code project. After installation is done, go ahead and go back to Blue Iris, click on the gear icon, click on the AI tab. Here, we're going to use AI server on ports, which is the local ports and IP address of 127.0.0.1. The port will be 32168. This is all default, by the way, but I'm letting you know just in case you have to change something or for whatever reason, installation doesn't look like that. Check the box, auto start and stop with Blue Iris. And make sure that GPU is unchecked because we're not using GPU, we're actually using the um, Coral chip. If you don't have the Coral chip, go ahead and check the box for the GPU, assuming that you're using the GPU card, like from NVIDIA, for instance. ATI cards will not work. And if you don't have the GPU nor the Coral chip, go ahead and uncheck that. That will actually use your CPU, Intel CPU, and that will use a lot of resources. That's why in this video, we're going to focus on the Coral chip because it makes your life, your CPU life, so, so much easier and much, much faster at detecting objects. Click on the dashboard to view the um, Code Project website, the local website server, I should say. By default, it's going to have the object detection YOLO version 5.6.2. It already started it by itself. Whenever you start the machine, whenever you start the Windows machine, it will automatically start by itself. Let's click on stop and install the uh, Coral chip module. Go to the install module. And you'll see it right here. There's only one, by the way. If you want, you can uninstall the other modules, like the one that was the default, YOLO version 5.6.2 or you can just leave it as such. Installing the Coral module onto Code Project takes forever. So um, now is a good time to take a break or do something else or get ice cream because it took me like maybe two or three hours. And I'm on super fast internet, by the way. If Coral is installed successfully, you'll see that the module is sitting right there down the bottom. Its status will be ready. Now to get the Coral chip working with Windows, you can't just plug it in and expect plug and play. Nope. You have to go to this website right here. You have to go to the Coral AI. Go ahead and go down to install the runtime. But before we do even do that, you need to have to make sure that you have the Microsoft Visual C++ 2019. Go all the way down here and click on that exe file. Once it's installed, go ahead and click on install. Well, first you have to read everything, click on agree and then install. I didn't read anything. I just click on agree and then install. Next up, download the runtime. It's a zip file. Once you download the zip file, go ahead and extract it. Put it in any folder you want. I put mine in program files. And then extract. Go to the folder where you extract everything to. Find the install.bat file. Double click on it to execute it. Click on more info and then run anyway. Are you sure? Click on yes. Type in Y for yes. Click on install. Press any key to get out of it and you are done. As I mentioned earlier, the YOLO 5 will automatically start by itself when you start your Windows machine. 
If you want Coral to automatically start by itself, you have to change some settings. So here we go. Go to the folder where you install the code project. So mine by default is program files, code project, AI, modules, and then object detection Coral. Find this JSON file. It's module settings.json. Open it with Notepad++. Go down to line 22, and it should be by default is false. Change the false to true because you want Coral to automatically start by itself. Save the file. We're going to do the exact same opposite to the object detection YOLO 5 because we don't want that to auto start. So go and find the module settings.json. Go down to line 20 or whatever it is. Find auto start and change it from true to false. Here we can see that Coral has already started it. It's using the TPU chip that's inside the uh, Coral chip itself. Click on the gear icon will let you change some of the settings if you want. So right now for model, I'm actually using YOLO version 8. The model size is medium. And that seems to be working pretty well. Look at the time. Everything is crazy super fast. You see it? Everything is like in the low 30s milliseconds. By the way, it's kind of interesting that we have auto started as true. But I wonder if there's such a thing as auto resume. What happened was that one time the Coral module shut down by itself, or maybe it crashed. So the status was sitting showing as ready. I had to manually hit the play button to get it started up and running again. So if you know if there's such a thing as auto resume after a crash, please let me know how to do it in the comment section below. I would really appreciate that. All right, let's jump to Blue Iris to make sure that everything is being sent to that Google Coral chips to process person detection because that's all I want. You can do it for cars, pets, or whatever. But for me, I don't have any cars or pets, so I only care about person. Let's jump to one of the camera settings to make sure that it is sending data to the Code Project AI. Right-click on it. Go to Camera Settings. Go to the Alert tab. Checkbox confirm the alert with AI. Click on AI configuration. In the alleyway, there's no way a car can fit in there, so I'm only interested in person. So we're going to ask the code project to confirm if it is a person or not. You can change the minimum confidence level. Let's bump it to 60. That way we get fewer false alerts if it thinks that a shadow is a person. Everything else looks good. And then click on OK. On alert, and this is where I showed you in the previous Blue Iris settings to send the alert to Home Assistant to trigger something. If it detected a person and you want something to occur, like for me, I set it up in Home Assistant to do something, like turn on the floodlight, for instance. Click on On Alert. Click on the plus icon. Web request or MQTT. The required AI object is person. The MQTT topic is this and the payload would be on, or whatever you want it to be. For simplicity's sake, I'm just going to have it as on, and then click on OK. On reset means if the person is no longer in the alley, what does it do? It will send an alert as well. So on reset, click on the plus icon, go down to MQTT. If the person is no longer in the video, then go ahead and send the trigger as off, and then click on OK. Not only will I get an alert when the uh, person is detected, I also get alerts when a person is no longer detected. That's important to turn off the floodlight, for instance, and then click on OK. So we have person detection for 10 cameras right now in Blue Iris. And if you're curious what the CPU load looks like and the memory load looks like, here we go. I got the HAS services up and running, and this is what it's showing right now. Usually the CPU load is about 30%, and the memory is much, much lower at uh, 40%. Let's click on the icon to see the trend. So yeah, the CPU load is pretty good for 10 cameras doing person detection. If you try to do this with just bare CPU, you'll be sitting at 80% most of the time. I know, because I tried. That's why I had to get this uh, Coral chip from Google. And I think it's totally worth it at about $75 as of now. So in summary, Blue Iris is crazy powerful now with local AI integrations. For instance, if the leaves are blowing around in my front yard, Blue Eyes will send that frame, that image, straight to the uh, AI to detect whether there's a person or not. 
if there's no person detected, don't bother with the uh, storing the uh, video. Go ahead and reject it, and don't even bother sending any alerts to my home assistant, for instance. All right, hopefully this video helps you on how to set up the Coral chip along with Blue Iris. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and thanks for watching.